So, part two. Let's get this metal brock off of here. Get the air cleaner off. Put that somewhere where it won't fall. Won't bang in anything. There's a little bit on the heavy side, believe it or not. Alright, let's get back to that carb. Alright, so, I've already jumped ahead. This is my uh, vacuum line to my brake booster. The vacuum brakes. Uh, on the Holly, it's, uh, the vacuum port's clear on the other side of the carburetor, so I had to run an extension hose. Again, I'm setting this up in a temporary means, good enough for testing. In case I want to go back, I can put it back to the Edelbrock. In case I want to go forward, all that means is getting in here and prettying it up. But for test purposes, I just want to get it to where it's in a functional and safe, uh, condition. So... I already removed the uh, throttle cable. I've already removed the kick down to the transmission. And I'm going to keep this hardware that's specific to the Edelbrock on the Edelbrock car. I have Holly hardware on the bench, a dual feed, dual line on there, and it gains back some length of the fuel uh, run. So, let's get this uh, carb out of here. Half inch hardware. Almost wanted to believe it was metric. I'm just going to put my wing nut up on the stalk. Again, be careful. Uh, things are generally uh, designed to fall down inside the carburetor, down inside the engine. Uh, it's a heavy gravity point. Uh, I've dropped many a component down there and uh, wiped out valve train and blown up engines. Alright, in the magic of camera, start and stop carburetor, the Holly that is, is now installed. So, I had to get a bit clever. Where the geometry is for the transmission uh, pressure rod. I had to use one that was modified with this nice little bend on it. Try and get some light on that. So there's a, a bend inward towards the carb to grab that bracket right there. And I uh, did the trick with the spring through the hole back here to hold the rod, the rod hole actually, instead of using the cotter pin. I've seen a few guys use that. I'm going to try that for myself now. And that's latched just under where the throttle comes in. I may have some interference. I have yet to try to depress the pedal inside the car. I'm going to do that now. But I got fuel line hooked up. Got vacuum advance hooked up. Bolted down. Heat choke is wired in. Uh, brake. Uh, vacuum line is hooked over to the other side, like I said. So I think she's ready to go. Let's try the gas pedal again. We're gonna try this without the car running. All right. Pedal feels pretty good. Doesn't bind. When I put the Edelbrock in, there was some binding, and it turned out. Your transmission pressure rod axis, as it lands on the carburetor, the carburetor axis where that pressure rod lands on, must be pretty much side by side with your throttle clevis cable's axis. If not, you you are fighting yourself. In the garage, it is 90 degrees. So. What we're going to do is we're going to button it up for tonight, kill the lights, so the, let's unspin this, folks. Actually, let's take this one out. I think we can go with a shorter rod on this. I think that's going to poke a hole through my hood. So, this one was something... I think uh, we utilized 
for a Holly for the little 600 that was once on this car. Got a good couple of threads in there. That rod feels like she's bent. That probably, probably is. Be careful with your wing nut. Landed good. And the top. And the top lands even better. This bottom base has a specific position on this car in particular. Otherwise, there's under ribs, support ribs in the hood that will hit it and probably push it off the carburetor and like bend the rod. It's probably where the rod got bent. Down. And I'm just going to land our light down in here so I can see where the hood closes. Ready for a test run.
So let's give her a couple minutes. Let that temp gauge come up just a little 190. Let the thermostat open up and take it for a blast.
So. Comparison. Holly versus Edelbrock. I think top end, the Edelbrock has it. I think bottom end, the Holly has it. Uh, now the individual I got the carburetor from, the Holly anyway, stated the secondary didn't seem to open. Uh, I definitely heard them open. Uh, again, I think the Edelbrock's a lot noisier of a carburetor. Definitely can tell every time you hit the gas to the floor, the secondary's open. This thing, uh, definitely, uh, definitely a little bit smaller bore of a carb. Um, definitely saw a little better bottom end. Uh, she's got maybe a little bit of an idle issue. But again, this is a used carb. This is typical of what you might buy second hand. Um, but for straight up comparison, I've been driving on my Edelbrock for a little more than two and a half years. So I guess to be fair, I'm not comparing brand new carburetors against brand new.